I'm Dan Collins with Mercy Medical Center in Baltimore, Maryland, and you're watching Medoscopy. Thank you for joining us for today's procedure. Today, we begin the first installment of what I hope will be a continuing leadership series, an opportunity to speak with the individuals who work in tandem with both the clinical and lay staffs to map out Mercy's future, with an eye always on the Mercy mission. Our guests today are Dr. David Main, President and CEO of Mercy Health Services, and Sister Helen Amos, Executive Chair of Mercy's Board of Trustees, and a former Mercy President and CEO herself. Sister Helen, I'll start with you. I mentioned just now about the Mercy mission. How would you define that? What is Mercy's mission? Most fundamentally, it's to give witness to the God we believe in. In short, we believe God's merciful and God expects the same of us. So we give witness to that God, that merciful God, by caring about and caring for everyone we encounter, especially our patients and their supporters, but also our physicians, all of our staff, everyone who makes this organization tick. Dr. Maine, what would you say the Mercy Mission is? Well, I don't think I can articulate it uh, better than Sister Helen, but you know, I think first and foremost, our mission brings us focus into everything we do, everything we've done, and everything that we will do in the future. So I, I think at, at the end of the day, it's about providing the highest quality of care for anyone and everyone who walks through our doors and uh, doing it with empathy, compassion, and the warmth that the sisters brought 148 years ago. Now, Dr. Main, you're actually the first physician to hold the top spot in Mercy's nearly 150 year history. Um, what drew you to the, this administrative role from the clinical role? You know, I first came to Mercy in 2002 as an intern. And um, quite honestly, it, it was around that time that I just fell in love with the institution and what Mercy represented in healthcare. I, I, afterwards, I went uh, to Hopkins to finish my training and came back uh, to, to Mercy in 2007. Uh, to start uh, my, my practice, uh, which was a new center of excellence, uh, the Center for Interventional Pain Medicine. And it was during that time as I was starting uh, uh, practice after residency where one, I, I particularly was grateful for the privilege to care for people, uh, people who are vulnerable and, and many people with maybe lost hope a little bit and, and the opportunity to Help, help there and, and, and provide hope and, and provide relief. Uh, and, and the support of, of mercy in that endeavor uh, was just remarkable uh, for me. So I was extraordinarily happy uh, uh, to be here and, and satisfied. We spent a lot of time working. I always tell people, oh, you better like what you do. Uh, and and uh, I just found it extraordinarily uh, satisfying. And, and it, through the, over the last 15 years, uh, the, my career evolved. I, I took on uh, roles within the medical staff and I saw another uh, layer of, of healthcare uh, delivery and, and the integration that's necessary uh, to be successful at it. Um, I then uh, went on to do some work in clinical transformation. I took over as a senior vice president of clinical transformation and did work on, on our ambulatory surgery uh, strategy and some of our offsite uh, work uh, that we do for uh, delivering healthcare in communities. And then it just continued to evolve uh, from there as I did more work within the physician enterprise and, and um, uh, those experiences just built on each other uh, to, to bring me to where I am uh, now, uh, so. Let's step back a minute uh, from this and, and go back a little further in your history and return to your youth. Now, you're a, you were born the son of Jewish Iraqi refugees who fled Iraq for Europe in 1972. Uh, and with the assistance of the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, uh, you emigrated to the United States, settling in Rochester, New York in 1974. Um, what was that like coming to the United States? You know, so my, my parents and my sister, uh, my sister was born in Iraq and, and uh, they had actually gone to Lebanon first and then uh, came over to Europe and then Hyas uh, helped in their immigration to the United States. 
Uh, my twin brother uh, and I were, were uh, born in 76. And, um, you know, we had, we had uh, what I would call humble, humble beginnings, uh, but, but, but we had a happy home, uh, a home that was full of love and laughter and, and food. <laughs> and and uh, um, I, I honestly uh, felt very blessed. I never, I, I never felt the struggles that my parents were experiencing. And I, you know, I only know that in retrospect as I became a, a, a young adult and, and learned more and more about our, our history. But at the time, I, I felt like I, I had uh, the perfect home. It wasn't without challenges, but uh, it was a happy home. And uh, uh, I think that's real credit to my parents in terms of how they were able to raise us. How long were you in Rochester? Well, I, I uh, was in Rochester through my undergraduate education. Uh, so I did my undergraduate at the University of Rochester. Uh, I, I went into neuroscience, which was my focus. And then I actually went to medical school in University of Rochester. So I didn't leave Rochester till 2002 when I came to Mercy and then uh, onto Hopkins. So did you get to see any uh, Red Wing games? I absolutely did. That's why I'm an <laughs> Oriole fan. So I'm an <laughs> Oriole fan because- uh, That's right. Uh, they were the, the AAA affiliate uh, for the Baltimore Orioles. And so I saw uh, many great Orioles in uh, Red Wing Stadium. Silver Stadium, it was called. That's right, <laughs> Silver Stadium. I do recall that. Yeah. Um, there's a wonderful book uh, about um, uh, the longest professional baseball game ever played, which was between the Rochester Red Wings and the Pawtucket Red Sox. I don't know if you've seen the, uh, I have the book. It's about the, the 33 inning game. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a wonderful read. So if you like baseball, I'll have to send it to you and take a look. Sister Helen, um, you've been in the leadership position with Mercy for more than 30 years, so you evidently like it here. <laughs> um, but you didn't start out in healthcare. Um, you began uh, in education as a math teacher and a college administrator. Um, why the transition to healthcare? Well, um, I tell people who understand that sisters take a vow of obedience, that it was actually an act of obedience the community, the Sisters of Mercy, wanted uh, a sister to succeed. Sister Mary Thomas, who had been the head administrator here for uh, 35 years, and uh, they picked me. <laughs> so, uh, so ultimately, that's what that's what brought me to Mercy. I had been serving on the board of Mercy for many years, and so I'd gotten to know a lot of the trustees pretty well, and um, they saw the potential in me to be the really transitional leader. My earliest time here, I devoted most of my attention to assembling a leadership team of um, people who had the right motivation and the skills and the ability to um, keep us growing, get us on stable financial footing and remaining faithful to our mission at this all, all at once. So that was, that was the early part. But, you know, um, I didn't really leave education. Mercy itself has an important educational dimension to its mission. We've had a longstanding, more than 100-year relationship with the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Um, seeing to the education of medical professionals has been a long time part of our DNA. We had a, a school of nursing for more than 75 years. We had a school of medical technology. My sister actually uh, went through the school of medical technology here and, and had her whole career at the University of Alabama uh, as a result of the education that she got here. So we, we consider medical education and uh, the education of medical professionals as really part of our mission. You also served as Sisters of Mercy, uh, I'm sorry, president of the Sisters of Mercy of the Union. Uh, and in that capacity, uh, you visited Jamaica, Guyana, Honduras, Belize, Argentina, uh, really quite an international uh, uh, foray into the world, visiting Mercy Sisters, learning about their mission. Now, you've called those experiences unforgettable. What was most unforgettable about them? I think what was most unforgettable was that the sisters in Latin America, South America, Central America, they taught me a lot about paying attention to the people you're serving, understanding what they need in their terms, instead of what you think you have to offer, you have to 
come with your skills, but listen to what people need. Our sisters in those countries live very close to the poor. And uh, that was a source of great, um, of their spirituality and of their uh, ability to minister in a meaningful way to the people that were their neighbors. And it gave them a great capacity for joy. Thank you. We'll take a brief break and be right back. The Center for Women's Health and Medicine at Mercy. Mercy provides GYN cancer services throughout Maryland and is home to the National Institute of Robotic Surgery. Our nationally accredited breast cancer team was first in the state to offer intraoperative radiation therapy. Mercy features 3D mammography, breast reconstruction, plastic and cosmetic surgery, the Ovarian Cancer Institute, a dedicated endometriosis center, and comprehensive GYN care. 1-800-MD-MERCY.